Alright. We're just trying stuff out. So that's what I'm doing right now. This is my poem, The Fisherman's Daughter. And I'm just trying out this ghost story. And it goes In a village by the sea, there lived a fisherman's daughter who brought fish to shore, leaving nothing but salt water in her wake. In the time she was a babe, there were many fishermen like her father who brought fish to the whole village. It was plentiful, and the village always ate heartily. But as the daughter grew older, the fishermen started to disappear. Their boats would simply turn up to shore, but not put their oars aboard. Her father in particular was very strange. His boat had turned up with the, hand, with the severed hand of a woman. His wife had lost her mind, but decided to keep the hand despite the protest of the fishermen. She laid it in an offering in her house for her husband, who had been lost at sea. What was strange was that it did not rot. It remained milky white and the skin was full as if still alive. What's stranger was no matter how many days passed, it still smelled of the sea. Now the village went through hard times. More and more of the fishermen disappeared. With the loss of her father, the, the daughter grew rough and tumbled. She herself took on her father's role, strong arms attached to a strong back, she had a knack for catching fish. Yet hunger was so rampant in the village. She would leave at twilight, but come morning, she barely had enough to feed three people. This went on and on. The village grew hungrier and hungrier. In desperation, she cried out to the sea, What must I do? In the night that followed, she dreamt of a woman with skin white as pearls and her hair like seaweed. Her bottom half, though, was fish. With beady black eyes and slender lips, she whispered, Grab the hand from your father's altar. Go farther than any other sailor. Cast the index finger into the sea and throw your net over the passing fish. In the village, they said that dreams of mermaids were the whispers of the sea. So when she awoke at midnight, she grabbed the hand from its resting place and set out into the vast beyond. And when her, and when her small dinghy was farther out than she'd ever been, she cut the index finger and cast it out. She watched as blood from the finger darkened the water like ink on a canvas. In moments, she felt the boat under her rumble as fish surrounded the boat she was on. The daughter cast out her net of love. Even her strong back struggled to pull the fish onto the boat. She hauled it back to shore and the village rejoiced. They had asked her how she had done it, but she hid the four-fingered hand behind her, not letting anyone know what the fish were hungry for. In the weeks that followed, her dreams grew more vivid, the mermaid beckoning her to go farther and farther out at sea. Each time she ventured, she returned with more fish than the last. Each time, the village ate more and more ravenously as if to feed a hunger that could never be stated a hunger that was always there, yet the hand ran out of fingers. But all that's left was a bloody palm with five stumps. In the dream that followed, the mermaid beckoned her even farther, asking her to throw the palm. And when she awoke again at midnight, this time she awoke in cold sweat. The daughter grew fearful, as she had never heard of anyone venture that far into the sea. The village was growing more and more listless, so what could she do? So at twilight, she got on her dinghy and rode and rode. The moon, shining above her, reflected in the water along with a sea of stars. She knew she had arrived when she saw fish swim backwards and the current be still no matter what the wind. She stood from the boat, looking at the sea she didn't recognize and wondered, had her father seen the same? Without a second thought, she cast the palm into the water, yet this time there was no rumble. The water remained still. A light wind passed over the fisherman's daughter as she wandered silently. Where were the fish? Staring into the water, she saw something making its way to the surface. It swam like a fish, but the first thing she saw was a human face. It peered out of the water, and when it opened its mouth to speak, the fisherman's daughter already knew something was different. This mermaid had teeth that was like that of sharks. Blood trailed from her lips as it swam closer, and she realized that its left hand was not but a bloody stump. In fear, the fisherman's daughter cast her net. She readied her spear, but she was far too tired. As she was so far out at sea, she had expended her strength just to arrive in the middle of nowhere. The mermaid howled and laughed as the net surrounded it. 
with its only hand to grab and pull with all of its might, cap causing the fisherman's daughter to tumble into the waters below. She could swim, yes, she could swim. But as she fell, the fish surrounded her, biting at her flesh. In her struggle, the mermaid placed her hand on her face and tore it off like a mask, licking the blood clean off. The fisherman's daughter bled out, dying in seconds as the fish bit and gnawed at her flesh. In the morning, the dinghy drifted to shore. And when the villagers investigated, they had found the villagers daughter, the fisherman's daughter asleep, with her left hand severed. Only then did they know what terrible fate was cast upon them. In the ruins of a village by the sea, there lived a sea hag with one hand, who eats men from head to toe, leaving nothing but bones in her way. Thank you.